Okay YouTube, so today we're going to talk about loads and system balance. This is all the second video in my series for installation of a 3.9 kW off-grid PV system installed up in Michigan. So, get right into it. It's really boring, but it's very necessary. We need to know exactly how much you or your customer is going to use in a given amount of time. Um, so you, you have to do this, and it's, it's not a lot of fun, but you can get something called a kilowatt meter. You can get them on eBay or Harbor Freight or Amazon. Um, they cost about 25 bucks if you buy them right, $39 if you pay way too much for them. But you plug them into the wall, and you can plug your appliance or whatever you want into them, and they archive all the data. It tells you how much energy they used over a given amount of time. They work really well, and that's good for that. If you don't have that, um, you could look at stuff like, for example, a 100 watt incandescent light bulb says 100 watts on it. And uh, maybe you could use uh, 10, 10 watt compact fluorescent light bulbs and figure that's 100 watts as well. Um, you can do all that sort of stuff. Well, if you have something like a well pump, it's probably not going to say what the wattage is on there. What it will do is it will give you a little plaque that will tell you how many amps and how many volts it takes. So it's probably going to be like 110 or, you know, or 120 or 240 or whatever it says, but then it will give you the amps. And I'm sure you're familiar with this, but if you're not, you can figure out the wattage if you know the amperage and the voltage, because amps times volts equal watts. So basically a 10 amp motor run over a period of time of an hour that draws 120 volts is going to take, is going to be a uh, 1200 watts or 1.2 kilowatts and if you do it for an hour it's 1.2 kilowatt hours so that's how that works so I encourage you to do the boring and awful tedious labor of logging all this down figuring how exactly how much you need for example you're gonna need a you know maybe your refrigerator takes hundred watts and over 20, 24 hours that's gonna be 2400 watts or 2.4 kilowatts per day write that down how many lights you use and what the wattage is on them and how many you know how long you use them for and the same thing with your TV and your entertainment if you have a heating system you got to put that in there too and that's all that sort of stuff so to get to this system my customer client um, he originally came up with over nine kilowatt hours a day which really isn't bad I think the national average um, uh, Americans use about 900 kilowatt hours per month so roughly about 30 kilowatts per day so uh, nine sounds pretty good, but in an off-grid you know, scenario where you have to store all your electricity, and especially as far north as Michigan, where they don't get a lot of light and the winters are long and the summers are short, that's a lot of power that he needs to store and he might need to store for prolonged periods when they don't have sun. So that's a big issue. So we tried to work with him. We got him down with a power management plan and tried to get him. And a power management plan is basically just saying, you know, if you're going to do a load of laundry, it would make some more sense to do it on a sunny day when the sun is shining than do it, say, at 9 o'clock at night when there's no sun. And the reason for that is that there's mechanical losses um, when you come through, you know, from the from the solar pa panels going through the charge con controller, there's an inefficiency that's lost there. Then when they go, the power goes into the batteries, when it comes out, you lose almost about 20% in there. So if you can just take it straight, you get it. It's kind of like the old, I like to say, people buy, um, it's better to buy at wholesale and sell it at wholesale than to buy it at retail and sell it at wholesale. So in other words, we don't want to get 10 kilowatts of power from our array only to find that we're only going to get 8 kilowatts of power out of our battery bank. If we, we, we can, through a power management plan, if we know that the, power, the batteries are all charged up, we can take those that power and send it straight through, bypass the batteries right into his washing machine or whatever he's doing. So anyway, that's how, what we did with the power management plan. And we got them down between 7 and 8 kilowatts per day, kilowatt hours per day. So what we had to do is figure out how long does he want to last? How big a battery bank does he need? That's one thing. And how big an array does he need? And that's another thing. So stick around. That's what we're going to look. Okay, so batteries. Um, well, you know what? Let me back up and say, let's talk about solar panels. We know that our customer is going to use around 7 to 8 kilowatts per day. So we 
we also know that we have to have to uh, figure that he's going to need to produce more power to be able to get seven to eight kilowatts out at the other end. So if you use, say, uh, eight kilowatts times one point two um, for the D rating or the you know we're we're saying that we we need to we're, we're going to lose about twenty percent. So if we add a little in there, it'll come up to nine point six kilowatts per day. If we uh, go with 15 260 watt panels, it comes up to 3,900. But after we derate the panels from the STC, you know, the standard test control to what they really put out, they're going to put out about 3,000 watts an hour when the sun's hitting on them perfectly. So in order to get our 9.6, we're going to need at least, you know, a little over three hours per day. Um, if you remember in the first video, we had some calculators that would give us some ideas of how much. Uh, usable sun we could use per day at the, the customer's location um, and so we're looking around four hours on average the problem is is that it's going to be a lot less in the winter and that's when you need need the most so we came up with uh, saying if we did 15 we did all this this would give us plenty of, of power in the summer and uh, just squeaking by in the winter in a couple months you might have to have his generator come on to help him out when he's been dark for a few days. Okay, so now when we move to batteries, we say, well, what how, what would we need? The customer originally said that he wanted to have four days of backup. So if we had eight kilowatts, if we were using eight kilowatts for four days, it comes out to about 32 kilowatts worth of use, or 32,000 watts. Now we're using six volt batteries, and uh, if you do that, that comes out if you say 32,000 divided by six, six because of the six volt batteries, come to 5,333, divide that by 225, which is the amp hour rating for the six volt battery. And that comes out to about 24 batteries, 23.7 batteries, which is about $4,000 for that bank. You say, well, that's, that's manageable, or maybe it isn't, I don't know, but anyway, you say, that's not so bad. Well, there's a problem with this, and that's, that, that's assuming that you're going to run the batteries flat dead. It's also assuming that, you're not, that, that everything you put in the batteries, you're going to be able to pull back out of it, which we can't do. So what we really have to do is do the same thing here, where we go uh, 8 kilowatts times 4 days equals 32 kW, but then we have to multiply it by 1.2 for that 20% loss that we lose going from the charge controller into the batteries, then out of the batteries back into the inverter, and then to the appliance. So we come up with 38,400 watts divided by 6 volts, 6,400 divided by 225 amp hours comes out to 2 point, uh, excuse me, 28.4, or call it 29 batteries. So now we're talking $4,500. You say, well, that's not bad. Well, here's where it gets really bad. This is all assuming that you get a full battery and you run it flat dead, which for these types of batteries are the worst things that you could do, probably for almost any type of battery. But anyway, for these, we know that to be the case. That, that, that's a really terrible thing. Let me bring you over here and show you. These, this is the, these are the batteries that we're going to be using. We're going to be using what they call the the Trojan T105RE, RE for renewable energy. It's a six volt golf cart battery, and uh, it's a. Uh, there's some things I like about it. For one, they make so many and they're so popular, they, they're very. I think they're a good value. They're also. Uh, a little easier to move around. I think they're 67 pounds a piece as opposed to some of the bigger batteries cost a lot more and and they're 400 pounds or whatever and so if you're gonna have to change these things out between 5 and 15 years, somewhere between 5 and 15 years depending on how well you take care of your batteries you're gonna have to change them out. So I'm thinking you know for this particular client he's probably gonna have a better chance moving around batteries that weigh 67 pounds as opposed to 400 so that's one of the reasons that we went with this but when you come down here it shows you all about this this is a really interesting chart uh, graph and what it is is these are depth of discharge cycles and these are the percentage or how the discharge the, the depth of discharge in percentage so in other words if you ran the battery flat dead used a hundred percent of the power in the battery you would get no, it's at about 700 cycles out of it. So maybe two years worth of use, and all those batteries that you used would be fl would be gone. They'd be burnt right up. So um, most people recommend that you don't go below 50% of your the capacity of your battery in order to maintain the batteries well. If you do that, 
now you can see you're up around 1600 cycles so now he's, he's, he's really increased the length of how long he's and you can see how steep this curve is so in other words if he, if he only used 30 percent of the battery and had 70 percent in reserve he'd be getting up close to 3,000 cycles and a cycle is obviously what the difference between you know when the sun shines in the day and then you use power all night that would be one cycle so um, that's a really interesting graph so we can't when, when we're looking at these numbers over here we can't say oh well forty five hundred dollars will do it yeah we'll do it and then you'll have to replace everything in a couple of years and we really don't want to do that so in order to go with a fifty percent depth of discharge you would have to do twice as many of these so your your uh... eight kilowatts at four hours per day went from forty five hundred to nine thousand dollars just in batteries which is uh... way too much for what we want to do i mean that's a that's a lot of batteries and it's if you have the money and you want to spend it go ahead but uh... we didn't do that so we opted for thirty two batteries and we believe that that's going to work out well so the way our system's playing out so far we're going to have fifteen two hundred sixty watt panels um, charging thirty two six volt two hundred twenty five amp hour batteries and uh... so the customer was able to do that it cost him about five thousand dollars for the batteries and he should have over two days of, of backup. When I say that, that's assuming that there's absolutely no power going into his system and his loads remain the same. So he should be all right for, for I think it's like 2.5 days or something like that. I don't have it right in front of me. But anyway, um, and that's hopefully that's never going to happen because even on cloudy days, he should be getting something out of his panels. Um, even when it's overcast, just still be getting something. You don't get a lot, but you get something, and something's better than nothing. So we're hoping that he'll get about three days out of it before the generator will come on. And when we set up the generator, you can set up these uh, you can set up these different points here. See when the, when you know we're going to use the system and it's going to be great. And then when, if it, if you know three o'clock in the morning it gets down to fifty percent depth of discharge, the, the generator will automatically start, fire up, and uh, charge everything back up to protect the battery bank. So that's how we're doing that. Hope you like it, and uh, stick around. Please subscribe, and uh, write any comments or questions below, and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you.